Murphy Schiller and Wilkes has formed a simple purpose in mind, serving as a one-stop shop for the legal needs of developers, lenders, and others in the commercial real estate industry. Based in Newark, the firm's attorneys represent clients in the most complex real estate transactions and land development proceedings, as well as property taxation, environmental and real estate litigation matters, and in the acquisition, sale, and leasing of all real estate asset types throughout the country. Their attorneys have broad private and public sector experience coming from top national law firms and high-level governmental positions. Through the development of individualized client-focused strategies, their team works tirelessly to create a blueprint for success and advance their clients' interests in every matter. To learn more, head to murphyllp.com or give them a call at 973-877-6984. All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Greetings from the Garden State. I'm your host, Mike Cam. We are here in Montclair, New Jersey today with Cara DeFalco. Cara, welcome to the show. Hi, Mike. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, thank you for having me into your home, and thank you for lunch. You're welcome. Uh, so people that are watching on YouTube can kind of see it, but we'll kind of we'll hold it up yes. so they can see. Yes, did a little... Like a whole bowl of linguine and clams. I don't want to tilt it because it's going to get everywhere. But <laughs> um, Because this is my second time in... Your cuchina, yes, in the kitchen here, yes. Um, but we were making linguine and clams the last time for your show. Yes, we yeah. were, we were, and we because we were rushing to um, produce and be respectful of everybody's time, sure. and you know, um, you know, so the pasta didn't fully cook, and so it really wasn't edible by the time we were done. And I always feel bad because I think one of the <laughs> the best parts of of coming on cuchina is that you get to eat what you make, and you didn't get to eat it. You well, you yeah. you know you you had to be somewhere. We had stuff to do, right? So it wasn't ready in time and so i just wanted to uh to give you <laughs> well i appreciate <laughs> the it. lunch that i owed you <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which is phenomenal and it's thank delicious you. thank you uh, but everyone's just gonna have to know that throughout the, at least the beginning portion of this episode i'm gonna try to eat you're gonna be chewing it's yeah, fine without yes. also trying to get it all over myself but but this is your story but, but you're smart sharing. and you wore black and you're, you're oh, yeah. all set and yeah and i just like there's a t-shirt on under this so it does, if it does you're good get you really have layers bad, yeah it's fine. fine we can throw it in the wash if we have to we're, cool. we're all awesome set. <laughs> excellent so but thank you again for you're that. very welcome uh so we're going to learn a little bit about you so we met originally virtually yes because you host the new jersey morning show correct right um but we're going to take it <laughs> Before that, we'll, we'll get to morning <laughs> show eventually. Um, but so I'm pretty sure you're born and raised Jersey. Jersey girl, born right? and raised. Yes. Where? Um, originally from Kinnelon, New Jersey, so okay. northwestern Morris County. Yeah. Um, you know, grew up in the woods or the boonies, as some people call it. Yep. And um, went to actually went to high school where you're living in Morristown. I went to Villa Walsh Academy. Okay. Um, and then wound up at Rutgers. So I really never, you know, I lived, uh, on the New Brunswick campus, but I never really left the state. Um, really until I graduated, I spent a year in Connecticut working for the NBC affiliate out of Hartford. Okay. Um, and that was it. That was the only, I, I literally made it, I made it like 11 and a half months. I didn't even hit the full year. And I was like, yeah. please send me home. Back to Jersey. <laughs> Back to Jersey. I was I mean, like, I had to pump my own gas. It was awful. <laughs> <laughs> that is, yeah, because I've lived out of Jersey now for, not now, but in the past, uh, a total of three years. Mm. Um, and when I came back, I was just like, thank God. Right. I'm back. I was like, I know? needed I needed a good slice of pizza. I needed a diner that was open 24 hours. Right. And to not have to put my own gas. Yeah, was really <laughs> Yeah. Um, but, uh, and then, so like, I know prior to uh, the stuff, that, some of the stuff that you're doing now, which we'll get to eventually, um you uh, were on News 12, NJ? Yes, right? I was on News 12 New Jersey. Um, I actually started behind the scenes with them. I started my career in TV behind the scenes. So, okay. so when I was working for NBC, I was behind the scenes. Um, then actually I moved down. I came back home and I was working for a station in Westchester. At the time, they were called RNN. They ultimately folded and then reopened as Fios 1, okay. which people might be more familiar with. Um, so I was there for almost two years. And then, yeah, um, I, when, when everything collapsed in 2008, you yeah. know, lost my job, you know, was <clears> home, <throat> um, actually started selling cars for about six months. Okay. <laughs> so you gotta, just, you gotta do what you gotta, gotta do. do. I was like, yeah. bills need to be paid. Um, 
and wound up through a connection, uh, getting originally a freelance position with News 12, and then ultimately a spot opened up um, behind the scenes. So I was working what's called the assignment desk. So in news, the assignment desk, I always refer to as like the brain of the operation. All the information comes through that point. Yeah. Um, and then that's where the crews get assigned to go out to the producers, pick what stories they want. Um, that's just, everything comes through that point. So it's really exciting. I really enjoyed working there. Yeah. Um, and I had, when I was at RNN filled in on camera as the weather person. So, okay. so, um, when, uh, and people again might know her, Stacey Ann Gooden, now she's on channel 11. So it's just, it news is a small industry. Oh yeah. For we sure. all know one another. Yeah. Um, so I was her backup at the time. And then at news 12, they needed a backup traffic reporter. Okay. Just I, a friend of mine was like, you should just give them your reel and see what happens. You know, you yeah. used to be on camera. So I did. And they were, they kind of left. They were like, um, how come you never told us you could do this? It's <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know. It didn't seem right. Being on camera didn't seem sustainable, particularly as a woman, because I think sometimes and it's changing now. Thank goodness. But. Um, you know, at the time there was, there was very much women came with an expiration date, right? You know, if you were going to be on camera over 40, you damn well better not look it. Yeah. Um, you know, so that was something I was always kind of a little concerned about. And I was like, let me just establish myself behind the scenes. It's yeah. a long-term career. Right. Uh, at least in my mind it was, um, anyway, so to make a long story short, I was the backup traffic person. The girl left, then I became the full-time traffic person. Um, and that was really um, where my career really got started. I was the morning traffic reporter for five and a half years for, okay. for News 12. So. Yeah. And so, like, before all this started, like, growing up, was young Kara, like, into news? Was she, like, you know, going not, around, like, pretending to interview people? Like, what, what was, like, what, what were you getting into then? I think not so much news per se, but definitely TV. So my dad, I grew up, my dad was completely fascinated with the fact that like, you know, like it was the, you know, the, the mid eighties and camcorders were available and yeah. he just loved the idea that he could document his family's life. Oh, that's cool. So yeah. we always, I mean, there are hours of videotape of me and my brother, you know, just putzing around the house as little kids on like a random Thursday. Um, so I think for that, like I kind of grew up in front of a camera, not it, which is, I think just what always made me comfortable, sure. um, in that way. And then I did always enjoy to entertain and to kind of like be, so I, I know there's some video somewhere I made my dad, you know, again in the eighties, like the big entertainment oh, units yeah. that we all had yep. and the TVs. Yeah. So I made my dad pull the TV out of the entertainment unit and I like slid behind it cause I was always very tiny. Um, and I, my, my brother and I, we did like a whole show in the box that the TV would fit. We made my dad record it. So, yeah. You know, I think, yes, there was definitely some early, like, you know, this kid's going to be a show of some sort. Yeah, right. Yeah, like, see a camera. Yes. Ham it up for the camera. Exactly, almost. exactly. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and then was the Connecticut job, like, your first job? Uh, that was my first job out in, of college. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so I had, um, I had interned for NBC in the city, and there wasn't an, an open position there, but I had done really well. And, and the people who were, you know, my, my intern managers at the time said, listen, you know, it's not that far. There's this open position up in Connecticut. Why don't you take that? And, you know, when something opens here, we'll call you back kind of a thing. But right. like I said, Connecticut just wound up being not just not the state of Connecticut, but it was just there was a lot going on there. I was originally hired for one shift. I was there for two weeks and all of a sudden they moved me to the 3 a.m. shift, oh, uh, you wonderful. know, became really, yeah. you know, which makes it very difficult when you move to a new, new place to make friends, go out, meet people. Because like, uh, well, yeah. I have to go to bed at 7 p.m. Right. So, you yeah. know, can you go out for dinner? Can you go out for, anything. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Lunch dates only. <laughs> Lunch dates only. Yeah. Exactly. So, yeah. Um, yeah, it was just it really was a challenge. Um, for me personally. And I just, again, growing up as an Italian American, I, you know, we always grew up around family, my aunts, my uncles, my cousins, you know, so to be removed from them, um, was also very difficult for me. So it was kind of like I was struggling and I didn't have access to my support system. Right. Um, so that was hard. Yeah. And so like kind of going through this and like, you know, doing these things, uh, you mentioned it before the, the types of jobs behind the camera, like what, what are, what are you doing back there? Um, like a producer type of thing behind the scenes. Yeah. So it's, it's the job is called assignment editor. Okay. So again, you're working on that desk in that, that brain of the newsroom. So, I mean, my day would start with, you know, a list of all the municipal, even at news 12, all the municipal municipalities in New Jersey, their local police department, call every single one of them. Hey, did every, anything happen overnight? Everything's cool. Everything's clean. You got anything to tell us about, you know? So I think a lot of times, especially when people say, oh, you know, 
my right to know. Well, yes, you have a right to know, and your right to know is you are welcome to call your local police department every single day yeah. <laughs> and ask them if anything happened, and they have to tell you. That's your right to know. Okay. What news and journalism does for people, and I think this has really gotten lost you know, in modern day, is that... We did that filtering for you. Right. You know, the stuff that you want to know. Right. You know, of the 520 some odd municipalities in the state, you know, 500 of them didn't have anything happen. Yeah. That's, and, you know, two hours of my time that other people didn't have to go through for their right to know. Right. We do the filtering for you kind of a thing. Yeah. And so is it like, so obviously you just said, I mean, there's uh, anybody can call and get that with the right to know, but like parsing through that and then, you know, like developing relationships with these precincts, I would imagine also is like a big thing too, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Especially not only for us on the desk, but for the reporters in the field, you know, some of them would have a good connection. Um, maybe not necessarily with, um, a lot of the larger departments, Newark, the the big cities have information officers. Um, and they generally have a good rapport with the reporters, with the assignment desk editors. Um, because we talk to them all the time. Every time something happens, that's the guy you talk to. Yeah, right. Um, so yeah, so it is, it is good to have those relationships. And again, yes, you, that's what you get, you know, when you're doing it for years and decades. And, and so you develop those relationships and, and you're able to get more information from from those folks you know sometimes there we would have times they would call us and say hey uh you're gonna want a crew at the courthouse at two yeah uh, why don't just, ask me why just, just be there at two yeah. exactly. right. okay <laughs> <laughs> got it yeah well because it's interesting to me too like <clears throat> excuse me um you know going through these things and like calling these precincts and getting the stuff that is like newsworthy essentially yeah but it's also interesting that you said too that like that, that kind of like like what's actual news has kind of been like lost a little bit almost. And now it's, you know, like I feel like it's a lot of responsibility to decide like what's going to make it into, you know, the teleprompter and what's not worthy of getting there. Yeah. It's, and it's hard. And I, and again, it's, you know, social media has its benefits for sure. You know, it makes the world a little bit smaller, but at the same time, I mean, there is, no filter there. And so, and, and, you know, when people say the media sure. kind of in that broad general sense, and I'm like, okay, well, the media is basically anything that you can receive through a monitor from your cell phone, from your TV, yeah. from your laptop, this is media, this is media, right? Yeah. So it's like, you know, we don't necessarily have people who are established journalists with that kind of ethics clause behind it. It's not like a doctor where like doctors have that, you know, something they sign their name to do no harm kind of a thing. Yes, exactly. Um, But there are journalistic ethics and those of us who love the job and love, you know, what it stands for, I think keep that in mind all the time. So I always say, you know, your your local journalist don't drive by your local journalist if you see them out doing and like throw your your soda at them that's not cool. like that's your neighbor they're just trying to do their job and right. quite frankly the information that they're disseminating they probably got from your local precinct from your mayor yeah. from townspeople that they talk to on the street like they're not making it up as they go right um, which I think sometimes is the the messaging that's good but oh you know they're trying to give it not me listen if you're watching you know the larger 24 hour national news networks yes that's a business they have to make money yeah odds are good. You know, they, they might, I always tell people find three that you like. Right. Um, and compare them, you know, when, see when how they talk about different things, see how they talk about different things. I would say make at least one of those be something that's kind of notoriously not, uh, aligned with your own personal beliefs. Right. Um, so you kind of get the, because I'll tell you what, if you look at something like that, if you take three and you go, okay, they all said this, Odds are good that's true. Sure. You know, if they're like, oh, but this one said this and this one said that and this one said this. It's like, well, okay, that might require a little yeah. more research on your part. And this one spent five minutes. This one spent one minute. This exactly. one spent, you know, like a blurb on the bottom. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like ticked across the bottom. Yeah, yes. for like half a second. <laughs> um, yeah, because I think that's like really interesting because I think it does, you know, obviously sways a lot of a lot of stuff. Absolutely. But, it's um, and what so. Uh, when you get back to Jersey and then like the 2008 stuff happens, are you, so where are you in 2008? Uh, I'm You're, at RNN. So RNN. I'm working out of Westchester. Okay. Yeah. So again, still local news. Sure. Um, that was, we were trying what I thought was a very cool experiment and it really unfortunately just ran out of funding. Um, it was a TV station that had partnered with a local newspaper. Okay. Um, so the journal news was our, our local newspaper that we partnered with. And basically what we were doing was an evening newscast where we had a handful of field reporters that were doing 
traditional, you know, field reporting, we would also then bring on the newspaper reporters because again, they had newspapers being so much more established, long-term established than television, right? Uh, just historically, yeah. um, you know, those guys had these wonderful connections. They had great insight. They really were, you know, kind of experts in their fields because they've been reporting for 10, 15, 30 years, yeah. some of them. Right. You know, and so we would bring them on and interview them and we would be able to kind of report these stories with this a little more in-depth knowledge yeah. um, or, or links or information relationships, what have you, because of these newspaper reporters. So conceptually, it was a great idea. It just literally ran out of steam. Yeah. And I think it's almost kind of like the precursor to a lot of those types of outlets kind of like, for lack of a better term, like if a newspaper is like dying like that's what everyone says, you know, or like regular TV news. Like obviously people are going to watch TV no matter what, right. but like there's other ways, like you were saying to like get that information, but taking those two things, combining them and being like, let's do this, right. you know, cause you have all that info. Plus you have the people I would imagine on TV that actually have the personalities to get that information from those news reporter or the newspaper reporters out. Exactly. You know, I think it's a good yeah. marriage for sure. Yeah. It worked out well. And I think, I think even here locally, like NJ.com does a beautiful job of, being a newspaper and then also having a good video yeah, presence right. kind of a thing, um, you know, that they've basic. I think in a lot of newspapers in order to survive have kind of taken that on and said, okay, we need some sort of video element that we can put on social media, that we can stream online, what yeah. have you, um, because that is how people consume information. Right. And then, you know, kind of going off of that. So then uh, you sell cars for a little bit yes. and then, you know, eventually getting into like the on screen stuff, I think is an interesting part too. Um, so like, I, I know you had done it, uh, like as like a backup and whatever. Um, but like, what was that experience like to kind of almost make it full circle from like when you were a kid, just kind of like pretending in front of the camera to actually being like full time for that's, that's a five and a half years is a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, full time in front of a camera doing something like that. Um, it, you know, I don't, I'll never forget driving down to news 12 that first day that I was scheduled to like full-time be on air traffic reporter. Um, and I was, I was so nervous. I was so, you know, but it was exciting too. And it was just, it was like, you know, okay. I think, I think my biggest things were like, don't, don't curse, <laughs> you know, like Jersey girl born and raised, like, yeah. you know, mouth like a sailor. So I was like, uh, don't curse. <laughs> And, and otherwise fake it till you make it. Cause it was like, you know, it was traffic. And I was like, I was familiar with the roads, um, you know, the main roads in Northern New Jersey, cause sure. that's where I grew up. And that was my commute. But I was like, I really had to take the time to learn central and South, South Jersey. Yeah. Um, and what roads were important and where things got better. And again, it came with repetition. Sure. Um, but yeah, it was definitely a learning curve for sure. And it was a lot of just, you know, kind of smile and keep it short and yeah. <laughs> say this, what you this know. This line's red right Yes, here. exactly. Don't go there. Don't go over there. <laughs> <laughs> but, and I think that, I think probably for me, the, the other thing that was very ironic was when I was in college in journalism school, I once had a professor say to me, he gave me, we had to give an oral presentation for journalism sure. and he gave me like a, a B plus And he was like, the only reason it's not an A plus is because you talk a lot with your hands and you have that Jersey accent. Yeah. And I was like, I was so annoyed and, and it, I thought it was so ironic that I, my first job in TV was, well, I report traffic on a green screen right. in New Jersey. <laughs> so it worked out. Yeah. Yeah. When I first started, uh, like doing this show, like I had a girlfriend at the time, even my old show that I had and like, I'd be on there like on zoom calls, like talking like this because that's literally how I talk. Mm -hmm. Like it's expressive. It is. You know? And she's like, you got to stop with that. I'm like, I literally like physically cannot. I cannot. It's impossible. My, they used to joke, my friends, if, like if they needed me to shut up, like they'll grab my hands and put them down at my side. And I will stop talking. I'd be like, I cannot <laughs> I communicate without. without my hands. Yeah. Because it's just like, I don't know. And that's why I like this is just because like I can do whatever. It right. doesn't matter. You get to be yourself. You get to be authentic. Right. Yeah. You lay it all out there. Exactly. Um, all right. So I do want to get into the stuff that you're doing now. But since looking at the time on my clock, we're going <laughs> to take our first break now okay. and then come back and finish the rest of the stuff uh, for this episode. So uh, this is the Greetings from the Garden State Podcast. I'm Mike Ham. We're here in Montclair, New Jersey with Cara DeFalco. We'll be right back. The Mayo Performing Arts Center is the heart of arts and entertainment in Morristown, New Jersey. MPAC presents over 200 events annually and is home to an innovative children's arts education program. To see MPAC's upcoming schedule of world-class concerts, stand-up comedy, family shows, and more, head to mayoarts.org or just click the link in our show notes. Bored of going to the same park? Want to try a new local adventure? Well, then check out njspots.com, your home for finding a new spot to discover right here in New Jersey. 
With dozens of maps to check out, local hiking spots, family-friendly places, and seasonal suggestions, NJ Spots is waiting for you to find somewhere new to explore. That's njspots.com. All right, we're back for our second, uh, probably our second and final segment of this episode of Greetings from the Garden State. I'm Mike Ham. So we're here in Montclair, New Jersey with Cara, DeFar- uh, Cara DeFalco, my bad. Um, so in the first segment, we kind of like learned your background all the way up basically till what you're doing now. Yeah. Um, and we touched on what those things are. Um, so you do like a lot of stuff in media. Yes. Like, like we are talking about before. Um, so like, let's go through what those things are. So it's New Jersey Morning Show. New right? Jersey Morning Show. Cara's Cucina. Cara's Cucina. There's the QVC stuff. QVC. Uh, is that it? That's it for now. Yes. Okay. All right. That's pretty good. I got most of it. You, yes. Um, so uh, where do you want to start? Do you want to start morning show? Because that's how we met. Yeah. And let's then let's we'll start there. Like go that's there. So, common ground. Yeah. Right. So um, News 12. And then I think you told me that when I was here to record the Karis Kachina episode that a lot of the people um, that are like Christina and everybody that's yes. there come from News 12. Yes. Right? Yeah. And then, so now you're all on the On New Jersey, is that? Network. Right? Yep. Yeah, network. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, so like how did that process happen? Um, and I'm, now I'm actually going to eat this because okay, I yes, told you, you eat, I felt bad. Yes. But, yeah. Yeah, please eat. Like I said, a 90-year-old right. Italian woman <laughs> trapped in a 30-something-year-old body, please eat the food. Yeah, it's going to give me agita if you don't. It's fine. Maybe I'll, just, I'll mute my mic while you talk. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so my executive producer from News 12 New Jersey um, wound up starting this network with actually another friend of mine. And so we were, you know, it's it's a pandemic baby, much like this show where I, uh, you know, they were just kind of getting started and it really was a, a let's, let's see what we can do, what we can create. Um, and so we started... NJ morning show from our kitchens. You know, I was like bottom half, always in pajamas kind of a thing via zoom. There's literally no reason to ever there, put, there's there no was, reason to ever actually put every on single pants. episode of the morning spotlight, which was my original show. <laughs> like I'm not, I'm not, you know, just underwear underneath, but it's just like, right. There's shorts. There's like, you know, I might be wearing like all dressed up up top, but down below is yes, the total completely. opposite. Completely. Pajama pants, pajama pants, sweatpants, yeah, leggings. Everything. Absolutely. Yeah. For sure. Um, so yeah, so that was how we did it. And, and we did it that way for a year actually, um, before we were able to kind of get, uh, some studio space in Fairfield, New Jersey. Um, we got, uh, and, uh, you know, some sponsors, some outside deals coming in. Um, so it just, it's been growing slowly, but we really wanted to create something where, you know, we were talking about New Jersey so that it would be, headlines, it's information, but then it's also, you know, again, Christina and I are, you know, born and raised, like, right. you know, it's not just, uh, the news it, it's, you know, we, we live here too. Like when we do stories about property taxes, those stories impact us. Like we have something to say about it as well. Yeah, for sure. So, um, that's what I really like about the show. And we have a lot of fun with it. Obviously, you know, we have great guests like you on yeah. and things like that. And so I joke, I say that Christina and I are the, the Hoda and Jenna of New Jersey. Like it's very, <laughs> <Yeah>. you know, <laughs> right. Well, it was a lot of fun and I do think it's, it's like an interesting, um, concept for sure, because like it has like, it's, you know, like when you told me that, that a lot of you guys came from uh, news 12, it was like, it has a lot of those, like, um, I'm not going to say standard kind of like, uh, it's like a news show yeah. because that's what it is. And that's like where you guys come from, but it also has like a different kind of vibe. It's like a little bit more upbeat, a little yes. bit more like, it's not just very, you know, not regimented. Just cut and dry. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And it's, it's, it's nice. I think for a lot of us, you know, um, news, you know, we kind of, you know, it's a little bit death and destruction all the time. And when you work in it, you know, yeah. eight, 10, 12 hours a day, um, it can be overwhelming. It can be a lot emotionally. Yeah. Um, that's like my dad always watches, uh, or at least when I lived at home, he always used to watch, uh, world news tonight with David Muir. Yes. Oh my God. Everything's heading East. Everything's, you know, whatever. Right. Like the world's ending the world in like ending. 30 seconds exactly. before the end of this episode, Exactly. you know? <laughs> and so like, just watch, like go down the ship with the ship with me. And I'm just like, how do you watch this every, every day. day? Like this would be so depressing. Yes. Yeah. But. Yeah. And so, you know, and, and I think, you know, we've, 
had experiences where, you know, we, we have had to deal with these really heartbreaking, sure. yeah. you know, stories. Because so those exist. I'm not the, saying like, uh, right. like yes, a dream of, world. No, yeah. of course. And I, but I think that's it. I, so I think, you know, to be able to give people information, but like you said, in a slightly more lighthearted fashion sure. or, or just in a way that, you know, yes, this is serious right now. And then, you know, after the commercial break, we're going to kind of talk about, because there are good things happening yeah. um, around and particularly in New Jersey and, um, it just, you know, it really, I think, like I said, we really just wanted to highlight, you know, all the things I much like this show, all the things that are going on in New Jersey, because, you know, we're not New York's redheaded stepchild right. and, you know, we're better. Exactly. Yeah. Um, you know, and there's just so much here. It's such a rich history. Um, you know, the, I always joke, I'm like, there's nothing that you could eat in New York that you can't find here in New Jersey with parking. So I don't yeah. understand why. So I was a guest on this guy's show recently. And now you're going to get me on a story. But um, uh, my friend Beto, well, a new friend because we just became friends. But he does a show out of Booton. I like guess a little studio in Booton. Okay. And um, he basically interviews like a lot of like New Jersey artists and creators. So he asked me to come on the show. And like we were talking about it. And he made like this really interesting point kind of off of what you said. Like New Jersey has at minimum the second best of basically like every type of food that could exist. Like, Absolutely. so he used the example of like Texas barbecue, Texas has the best Texas barbecue, but you could probably find someone in Jersey that does it Doing, almost as good yes. as them. But like no one, no place else around there does like Texas barbecue. Right. You know what I mean? Like yeah. all this stuff. I mean, obviously it's first in some other categories, but those like niche regional, whatever, like you could find someone here that's doing it really yeah. well. And like, that's like a really cool and that's just food, but that's like anything really, I guess. But it's just like a, like a different kind of vibe. No, it totally is. And it's so funny because I feel like, um, and I don't know if you've ever done like when I go on vacation, not only do it like, especially if I go abroad out of the country, not only do I inevitably find somebody from the U.S., I inevitably find somebody from New Jersey. Oh, like that, that accent is unmistakable. I'm like, Jersey. I hear you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're from the same place. Well, yeah, I was like, I know you. Yeah. yeah. Um, I also had this other question and this was like popped into my head while you were talking about the, um, uh, being like the host of, of the morning show. Uh, like, so when I do this, like I don't listen to a lot of podcasts, but like growing up, I used to listen to like Imus, like when my dad would drive me to school, Imus would be on the radio or like, obviously he had his own like falling out of yes. fall from grace, <laughs> but, um, like Mike and the mad dog, like sports radio, like that kind of stuff. And like every time, like if I think of kind of, uh, influences on my life as like a, someone that hosts a show and interviews people, I feel like some of those are ones that I would point to to be like, this is how I learned how people talk on a radio show, even though this is a lot different. Um, did you have that? Do you still have that? Like being like, whether it's like the traffic stuff or being like an actual host now, or you're like, boy, I was like a huge fill in the blank fan. Um, I think that probably comes most into play for Kuchina. Okay. Um, and I think, let's talk about Kuchina. I think, yeah, I, I think for me, like I'm always trying to, you know, and they're like opposite ends of a spectrum. Um, but I love, I, I, I happen to love Jada De Laurentiis. I love Lydia Bastianich. Um, I also love Anthony Bourdain. Yeah. Um, well, yeah who doesn't? Right. right. Yeah. Um, you know, and it's funny for me cause I know so many, um, chefs who love him as a chef and, and coming out of journalism as somebody who had no journalistic training. I mean, the man was an incredible storyteller. Yeah. I mean, just, just like his way to connect with people yes. is just like, I am like a huge Bourdain, like everything he does. I just like, I need to get my hands on it, like yeah. read it, watch it, whatever. Exactly. It's just so incredible. And like you said, like the way that he weaves those like parts of known episodes together yes. is like, it's like magic. It's yeah. crazy. With like his voiceovers, plus the actual conversations, plus the food, which is obviously like a big thing too. Right. It's, it's insane. Right. So I think that was always, I, he's I, a know, Jersey guy too. It, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So which I think I'm sense. always trying to kind of like weave in and find a way to, you know, exactly that, like, you know, here's, here's the dish, but what is it? What's the story of it? And, and, you know, and why are we sharing it and, and why is it important? Right. Um, you know, so that's kind of always where I'm trying to go with, with Kuchina. Um, and also to, to teach people because I realized, um, in college actually, you know, I grew up with a mom who cooked us three square a day. I had both grandmothers alive and well till I was in my teens. I had a great grandmother alive and well who cooked for us as well. Wow. So it was very normal for me. 
And I remember coming home from my internship at NBC and my, I would make myself pasta for dinner. My roommates would be like, oh, you cook, you know, they had Chinese takeout. Yeah. Oh my gosh, you cooked. And I was like, I cook a boiled water. Like, you know, <laughs> yeah, seriously. And, and it, it started to occur to me that I was like, oh, people aren't raised this way. They don't know how to do this for themselves. And they would ask me, people would be like, you know, can you show me how you did that? Can you teach me how to make this? Or, you know, then I would get, you know, calls from like, as an adult, you know, from guy friends be like, I'm trying to impress this girl. Like, right, like what how, can do I, I, yeah. how do I make something, yeah. you know, can how you, you help pasta? me? How do I make pasta from scratch? <laughs> How do I make yeah. meatballs? And I'm like, yeah, okay. You know, so it was kind of all of those threads that, you know, that I, I'm constantly trying to weave in together where it's like, you know, you can cook for yourself. It is actually a simple thing to do. Um, you know, you have to just try. Right. And, you know, what are the the stories that, you know, why do we love to eat? We love to eat because we're sitting around the table with people that we connect with, that we love, that we're sharing stories with, you yeah. know. And so it's, it's all of that. I try to really just incorporate as much of that as I can. Yeah. So let's just give them like a base description of what Kara's Kachina is, even though we gave like the. That, oh, yeah. The, sorry. That was the broader description. Yeah. yeah so it's. Well, I want to make sure like, like they know if they've never watched it, like they probably should. Yeah. But like we'll do like the base, the definition definition of, uh, like the description, I guess. Yeah. So I just, I, I really describe it as a, a culinary lifestyle show, um, that, you know, just really focuses on, uh, you know, the concept of la dolce vita. It, so in Italian, it's, it's the sweet life, the good yeah. life. And, you know, it's, and it's also the simple <laughs> life. Um, so it's just that it's, it's food and how to cook and, uh, sharing that with others. Yeah. And like, how did, like the, the concept, obviously like, you know, you had all like all these you know, influences and people asking you questions and having you show like them how to do it. Um, but like actually putting it together into like an actual show. So the actual, believe it or not, the show actually started as a segment on news 12. Oh, okay. And what happened was the same I'm producer. Eat yeah. You, you eat, um, the same producer that now, um, does on New Jersey, um, it was around this, uh, you know, Easter time okay. and it just happened to be a, you know, a quiet day. Things were a little bit light leading into the holiday. And I was cooking with my mom and my aunt and I took some video of us making some traditional Easter dishes. So the, the pizza gain or pizza gain, pizza rustica people have a million names for it, but it's the meat and cheese pie that Italians make. And then my family uh, from Northern Italy, we do something called spinach torta. So it's spinach and arborio rice and as many eggs as you can possibly find. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so I took a little video of us doing that and I brought it into work and I said, Oh, listen, I know the show is a little bit light this morning. If you want to share some of this video and, and I can talk over it and blah, blah, blah. So, so we did that and, and he really liked it. He came back to me and said, he goes, um, do you think, could you like do something else for next week? Like just, and I was like, okay, sure. So I, I did, I think uh, my grandmother's ricotta cheesecake. Yeah. Um, and I actually brought the cheesecake in this time and we all had a slice oh, and, and cool. we, we just did it for like the last two minutes of a, what was a four hour morning show. Yeah. Um, you know, and he came back to me and he goes, do you think you could do this like every week? I was like, probably, I guess. Like, yeah. can I have like a little bit of free time during like, cause there like a day, one day a week where I could like get out of here early and do this instead. Yeah. And he was like, yeah, yeah. I'll set it all up for you. And that was it. That was how it started. And, and it just was one of those things where I would be in the grocery store, you know, I'm doing a traffic report every 10 minutes for four hours, five days a week <laughs> and one, two minute cooking segment on a Friday. And people would stop me in the grocery store and be like, Oh my God, you're the girl who cooks, Yeah, you know? And that was really the part where I was like, this could be something like, not just, you know, that I have this knowledge and I can share it with people I know and love and am close to, but right. like, Oh, this could actually be something that we could put out in the world and people might watch it. <laughs> yeah. And so uh, like, it's just, that's really cool because it's just like a, like an at home project basically yeah. that got on TV on TV. Yeah. And so like when, you know, to, to peel back the curtain, when I was in here, um, I forget his name. Izzy. Izzy had four cameras, four cameras. plus like with the overhead shot. Yes. I would imagine that like the first couple did not have oh, the that. first couple were done. No lighting whatsoever. My brother shot the video on, and this, um, like phone, cell phones didn't even have like video the yeah. way they do now. There was a, it was a little like stick camera thing that people could use. It was like the, the first like iteration a of, of like a GoPro. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, was, yeah. Something it was just, it was only like this big and it literally had two buttons and it was like record, like stop. I, that was it. I mean, now, what else do you need? A little, that's all the, the only buttons I know how to use on this camera. There you go. It was like, you know, and I was like a little teeny camera on like a, a gyroscope. So it would rotate around yeah. and that was it. So, so I bought that. My brother would take the video 
And that was, I mean, we, li- I didn't even have anybody to edit it. The, the, my, my girlfriend at News 12, who was an editor would like cut the clips then together. I just yeah. handed the whole thing over to her. Right. Like fix this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. I was like, make, make this make sense. Yeah. Because, um, because now, like, I mean, like I said, with all the cameras and like with Izzy back there, like it's, you know, and when it's you a watch full production. it on YouTube, it's like a full on production, which is awesome. And like, I'm jealous of, cause this is all I got, but, <laughs> um, but it also was, uh, nominated for an Emmy, yes. right? Yeah. Nominated for an Emmy in, in, um, in 2018. And so it, it is still to this day, the only YouTube cooking show possibly the only YouTube channel at all to be nominated for a, an area Emmy award, which is crazy, <laughs> right? I, so many people, I think not that it's not deserving, but I mean, just like with the level of YouTube, like production yeah. on some of these channels, it's I think just a lot like of people don't think to they sleep on. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. To, to put it out there. So we actually, I just, um, resubmitted one of the newer episodes, uh, for consideration as well. So Mine? hopefully, fingers the one that crossed. I did? Yeah, yeah. So, oh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> no, it had to be one that aired last year. I have uh, to, okay, I have to, right, have to right, wait fine. on these. Next year. We'll the talk. Next year, we'll, yeah. we'll submit yours. <laughs> Absolutely. Because um, it's just like such a cool thing because it's like, you know, when you told me that, I was like, oh, I didn't even know that that. Well, first off, I didn't know that YouTube channels could be considered. Nominated. Yeah. yeah cons- uh, considered for Emmys. But then just like, you know, it just goes to show, I think that it's like the level of production, like all that kind of stuff. Thank you. And yeah. The quality of the contents there for sure. Yeah. Um, but then like you also do some stuff through, I think Caris Cucina where you like do trips to Italy. And yes. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. See, I almost forgot about that, but <laughs> not getting that one past me, but can you talk to me a little bit about that? Yeah. So we, same thing. I, I, I just, so many of the, beautiful aspects of my life. I feel like kind of just fell into my lap or, or just kind of like congealed on their own in a, in a wonderful way. Um, and, and Italy was one of them. So when I started Cucina, um, on my own as the YouTube channel, uh, I got a phone call from a gentleman who basically said, listen, I've been a big fan of yours, you know, since you were on news 12, um, I see what you're doing now. I think it's beautiful and I work for this tour company. We think you would make a wonderful host for one of our Italy tours. And I was like, okay. I was like, so, you know, what does that look like? And he's like, well, you know, you would have to sell the tour. Like, we'll do the itinerary. We'll get everything, like, booked and figured out. You have to sell it. Uh, and, you know, you get, uh, once you get, like, 10 people, you know, you you your trip is free. And then, like, we'll, we'll pay you, like, a portion past that. And I was like, I'm sorry, let's just review. You're going to send me to Italy for free and then also possibly pay me on top of that? He was like, yes. I was like, where do I sign? Yeah. <laughs> And how many times have you been to Italy at that point when, like, in your life? I had been, I think I'd only been two or three times. Okay. I did do, I did a study abroad, so I did a summer semester there. Okay. Um, my parents took us for the first time. I think I was in the fourth grade the first time I went. So you're not really, like, yeah, you're was, looking at different things as an adult. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Um <laughs> And we did that first, you know, tour in Tuscany. And I'll never forget, like, waking up in the hotel, I, you know, Italy and Italian hotel. Like, everything's very small there. The Americans are, like, notoriously, like, larger people. Yes, we are. <laughs> yeah. Really it's one of our, you know, one best qualities, like, I'm, I guess. I'm, thankfully, I'm tiny, so, like, I fit in the beds. I fit in the shower. I can, like, shampoo my hair like this and not have to worry about, like, breaking something. But, yeah. you know, so I remember, like, waking up in, like, this little, like, twin bed in this little hotel. You know, we, we stayed in a converted monastery was the hotel okay. that we say was beautiful. Yeah. And I looked up at the ceiling and I was like, how do I do this every day for the rest of my life? I was just, I was so happy to yeah. be doing that. It just, it was a dream come true. Yeah. Um, and it's, you know, that first one was the first one we did was 2018. We had one booked for 2019 and then my tour operator pulled out at the last minute. So I was like, oh, you know, I had to find somebody else. Then right. we had it booked for 2020. Obviously the pandemic happened. So the whole, the, the, the whole thing kind of got kicked down the road a little bit. We were finally able to do one in October of, um, 21 and, uh, same thing. Then uh, the last year I just had a number of personal issues going on. We wasn't able to put another one together. Um, so I'm I'm working on it. The the goal is to do one. one. Yeah. Yeah. Do another one going on. Um, but again, I really work to customize them in such a way that if you've never been to Italy, you're going to see what there is to see. And if you've been 30 times, you're going to do something you've never done before. That's really cool. Yeah. So I, I, yeah. I try to really tailor it. And again, the, the focus is the food. Um, and again, how the food impacts the culture. So we do them by region. 
Um, I don't like to, I don't like those quick hit tours. I don't like to travel that way. I don't yeah. like to constantly be on the move, on the move, living yeah. out of a bag. And you really want to like dive in, sink your teeth into like what that yeah. community, whatever exactly. Has to so offer. the the last one we did was like you know Naples, Sorrento, and the Amalfi Coast. I mean, there there it's it's seafood, it's lemons, it's you know it's notorious for all those things. Um, you know, pizza was invented in Naples. How, yeah. You know, how do we not go make pizza in Naples? That's exactly what we did. So oh, cool. I, I wanted, I always try to do those things where it's like, you know, yes, of course, we saw Pompeii, we saw the Amalfi Coast, we saw Positano and Ravello, um, you know, but I don't know how many people can say, you know, I saw those things and then I went to an award-winning pizzeria in Naples and the chef taught us how to make our own dough yeah. and how to throw the pie and, you know, the whole thing. Right. Um, you know, so that's where I feel like, you know, people really get these kind of unique experiences on on my tours and I try to do it that way. Yeah, that's cool. Um, and then on the uh, the QVC side, which is the other thing that you do. Yes. Can you tell us like what it is? Because I think you like test out kitchen equipment is that yeah, right? Yeah, so I represent um QVC's own line of of cookware. It's called Cooks Essentials. Okay. Um and it's just that and I like that I'm the, I work with that particular line because it's very much in line with my own way of cooking. It is literally the everyday basic essentials that you're going to need in your kitchen. Um nothing too froofy or fancy. I don't like a lot of kitchen gadgets. I mean, I usually tell there you know, people are like, "Oh, like what do I need to start my kitchen?" I'm like, "You need a good set of pots, you need a wood cutting board, a wood spoon and a sharp knife. You should be fine <laughs> with just those right. items. Maybe a pair of tongs. That might be like the next thing yeah, I would so take. Yeah, you don't burn yourself. <laughs> exactly. <whatever>. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> you know, so it's it is those simple things. And then yes, yeah, so I get to go on QVC, which is national television, which sure. is so much fun. Um, and demonstrate these items for folks. So I, it's it's nice because I'm not so much selling the item. That's kind of what the host is for. They go through the colors and the pricing and the, the set and the other thing. And I get to kind of be like, Hey, look, I made this delicious dish using these yeah. pots and pans. And here's, you know, why, what I like about them and, and things like that. Right. So, um, do you get to like keep the stuff? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Well, there's a room upstairs with Just more of- kitchen <laughs> items than you could ever imagine. <laughs> like how many kitchens do you think you could fill with the amount of stuff? <clears throat> oh, how many, I feel like I could probably fully furnish about five or six people's kitchens wow. with what's that's pretty cool though <laughs> what i have and so but you do it out of here right I, and what i love about it is it's hybrid so yeah. okay i have the option to work from here <clears throat> if that's what's easier for me or um because i do have days where i do a full hour of tv for them and it's you know 12 or 14 items and i couldn't possibly even store all that food here to have it ready so i'm able to go to their studios right. which are out in pennsylvania yep um they have the most amazing culinary staff i just i like i can't emphasize enough how wonderful these people are. Yeah. Um, and they just, you know, they're, they're people who love to cook like, like me. And, and, you know, so they're fascinated to try a new recipe or learn how I do something or vice versa. Yeah. Um, it's cool to be surrounded like with people like that, that are kind of like similar mindset yeah, to you. Yeah. And, and so, and they just do a beautiful job, you know, so the tables are all set up, they're decorated, all the food's prepped and ready for you. So you really just get to walk on, yeah. uh, onto the set and, and, you know, you do your, your demos, whatever's already set up for you. Um, and they just keep it moving. I mean, the whole process there, again, coming out of TV, coming out of local TV yeah. to see you had this set up. I mean, it is a huge warehouse with, you know, when we do like the kitchen sets, there's eight kitchens yeah. set up, right. you know, and then the next section over is like eight bedrooms for when they do yeah. that kind of stuff. Yeah. Then there's a whole outdoor set when, when the weather gets nice and we start doing things outdoors. I mean, it's, it's mind boggling. Yeah. That's good. That's cool though. And, um, and I'm sure like you enjoy doing it. I love it. That yeah. is, that is, uh, it's definitely, you know, it's so much fun because it's so in line with everything. It's, it's kind of the perfect combination of all the things I love to do. Right. You know, it's food and cooking, <clears throat> it's television. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and again, just everybody there is so wonderful, so nice, so professional, so talented. Um, and you learn a lot about business because again, they, they sell stuff. That's their job. You know, yeah. they, they, they import things, they sell stuff. So everybody I meet, I get to learn something from, which right. I think is so, for me, that's really interesting. I'm yeah. like, tell me all the things. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, and I love I love that. That's awesome. Um, so, kind of as we're getting closer to the end of this episode, because I didn't like I just looked at this and we're almost forty three minutes into this. Oh wow, <laughs> which is great. That's like right on time. But um, like with all the stuff that you have going on, are there things like that you're looking to try to do maybe more of in the future? And if so, are you able to share any of those things? Um, yes. So kind of generically, but yes, um, I would love to, uh, and whether it be, you know, Karis Kuchina as it is, or in some kind of newer iteration, um, I would love to have, a a broadcast network show. Yeah. Um, and I would love to be able to, to, again, just continue to kind of, uh, like we said, you know, when we talked about Bourdain and things like that, you know, tell people stories through food. Um, and I always use, uh, the example I always use is chicken parm because when, if you go to like my, my friends in Italy will look at me and be like, they're like, the hell is chicken? Who makes you, you it's eggplant? You're supposed to make it with eggplant. Why do you guys use chicken? I was like, you don't understand. That was the story of Italian American success, you know, Italian immigrant success in this yeah. country. Meat was so expensive after world war two. And for them to be able to turn around and make a chicken Parmesan, it was like, yeah, I'm doing so well here. Yeah. I can make it with chicken. <laughs> It. I didn't know, know that. That's yeah. great. Yeah. You know, so it's just, I was like, you know, so it's one of those dishes that's like really simple and people kind of poo poo and, and things like that. And I'm like, yeah, but there's a story there, like, yeah. you know, and, and it's, and it's an important one. So that's, you know, that's the kind of stuff that I would love to do more of in the future. And again, just on a larger scale if possible. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then for people that like, cause obviously, you know, with the, the TV background and like all the media stuff that you're doing right now, like if people are like interested in getting into that line of work, like what are some like things that they should be trying to do? Like making their own stuff, just like, you know, interning someplace. Like how, did, how would that process look? I think, um, yeah, I think it's too fun. And I think it does depend. So for me again, like I went to Rutgers, I went to journalism school. Right. So I got that formal <clears throat> education. I was able to do an internship where I was able to make connections and have real world experience. Um, and I do at the same time recognize that the world is a little bit different these days. So that's not always necessarily possible for somebody. Um, I think it is, uh, yes, if you can do an internship of some sort, if they'll let you come in, um, you know, do something like that, definitely do your own thing because you're gonna, you know, you're going to learn the more you do anything, you're going to learn how to do it. So, um, you know, get yourself a camera and a microphone and yeah, just, start, just start talking, just start talking yeah. and, and see put what happens. Someplace. Yeah. Put yeah. It, you know, that's, I, I think that is the beauty of, of YouTube particularly and, and the internet in general is, you know, now there's a space for everybody. Right. Um, yeah. you know, and, and very low barrier to entry with a lot of this stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, even your, your cell phone, your cell, most people's cell phone has a very good quality camera on it, a, yeah. a halfway decent microphone. Um, you know, and you can start there. So I think that's more than anything is just, just start, Yeah. you know, and, and you really will figure it out as you go right. <laughs> kind of yeah. a thing. It's Eventually. Like, yeah, we, yeah. I mean, you start to look at it and, and <clears throat> it's hard sometimes. I, you know, I know even with me, like I, I'll struggle, um, with feedback because it is my heart and soul that I'm putting out there. So when yeah. people are like, oh, you know, like you could do this better, you know, I'm like, you know, it's a little painful yeah. cause you're like, Oh man, I really tried hard, you know? Right. Um, but you, I'm learning better to, to kind of take it in and adjust and be like, okay, you know, we, I can do that. I can see that, you know, you can always be better. Yeah. Um, right. But it's, you know, it's always when you put it out, it's good. It's, yeah. You know, like you, you're, you're happy with it yeah. or at least you drive yourself crazy, like trying to make everything perfect. Perfect. Yeah, yeah exactly. So I'm like, yeah, I'm like somewhere between like, you know, I think Brene Brown says like, I'm a recovering perfectionist yeah. and a, and a, a striving, <clears throat> uh, good enoughher. Right. A good enoughher. Yeah. <laughs> like that's, I, uh, I have a couple of clients that like I produce podcasts for mm -hmm. and they were like, what do you think about this? Like, can we do this? Like, what about this? And I'm like, like, yeah, like whatever you want to do, just yeah. do it, you know? And they're like, well, but what if it's not good? I'm like, it's going to be great. <laughs> But just turn the camera on. Like, let's go. Like, yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. That kind of thing. But awesome. So this episode has been tremendous. <laughs> I really appreciate you uh, having me into your home again for the lunch, for the swag bag, the You're whole thing. You're very welcome. Um, but if people want to go and, like, find more about you, uh, like, watch some of your stuff, all that kind of thing, uh, where can they go to do that? Yeah. So um, I think the home for everything is really simple. It's just caradefalco.com. So it's my name. Um, YouTube is youtube.com 
slash Cara DeFalco on Facebook and Instagram at Cara DeFalco. So you could probably just put Easy. my name into Google and I yeah. should show up. <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully. That's, yeah. As that's long as the, the SEO stuff is working. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Um, but again, thank you so much for doing this. Thank you. Um, I'll make sure that I put uh, all those links in the show notes so people just go click them um, and go find your stuff wherever they want to get it. Um, but uh, so this has been the Greetings from the Garden State podcast. I'm Mike Ham. We were here today in Montclair, New Jersey with Cara DeFalco. Thank you for listening and we will catch you next time.